What's going on, everybody? It's Q Jackson, the lifestyle editor of The Quintessential Gentleman. And I'm excited because I'm here with two of my favorite guys in the um, spirits industry, Javars and Jared of the Red Lady Rum Punch. Guys, we finally made it happen. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon. Thank you guys for being with us today. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Thank sir. you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. So look, man, two black men in the spirits industry. Um, first of all, tell us about um, the Red Lady Rum Punch. And then I want to know how you guys got into the industry. Yeah, man. So the Red Lady Rum Punch is a all natural rum punch, all natural spirit, 20% um, alcohol, 40 proof, uh, based here in St. Petersburg, Florida. Um, everything's made here um, inside uh, the external, you know, shipped out. But ultimately, yeah, we're based here, man, and uh, we're the owners. So the way uh, we got started, well, Jared got started back in college. If you want to oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, so the origin story, man, I, I threw a college party one night, uh, me and a buddy of mine, uh, 15 gallons of the Red Lady, uh, 10 o'clock at night, 6 o'clock in the morning. Uh, we had 300 plus people in that house, man, and I was able to pay two months rent. So, uh, yeah, I came home and tried to catch lightning in a bottle. It was bootlegging a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, ultimately got too big and uh, had to make it an official thing. Um, Javars came on summer of 2018 and we've been rocking ever since. Okay. And, and, and the way we kind of partnered um, was, was kind of crazy. Uh, we was out one day with my, my mentor, um, his best friend, and um, kind of like I was going back into uh, school to get my MBA degree and he was uh, still chugging along with the, with the beverage. And I was like, yeah, I think we should partner because I got some ideas. Uh, he got the foundation and things like that. And um, you know, from there we kind of like you know made it did the you know partner up together, and then next thing you know we off to the races. Yeah. Okay, now a question that I don't think I've ever asked you guys, but mm -hmm. who is the red lady? <laughs> so, so every we get that question a lot, yeah. man. And it's not it's not a singular woman. Uh, actually, the name came from when I was growing up. What'd you say? Say that again, Q. Can you hear? Can you hear us? I can hear you now. Oh, okay, yep. cool, cool. Okay, my bad. I thought you mouthed something. Anyways, so when I was coming up, I was growing up, my mom used to always make punches and she used to call them ladies. So we had the, the purple lady, uh, we had the green lady, never mm -hmm. had a yellow lady because I was lemonade, and we never had a red lady because I was Kool-Aid. So the minute I made this in that kitchen, I was like red lady. Mm -hmm. And um, I could I try to get away from it because you know, listening to people in your ear, you know, oh, don't call it a woman, that might be too sexual. And I took um, I took about like probably about 90 days to try to switch it. And I couldn't switch it. Uh, at the end of the day, if you can't say the red lady, you can't speak English. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. So here we are. It's catchy. And uh, people remember it, too. So not a single lady. But one thing that is deliberate on the bottle is that the lady is brown. And uh, we both feel, you know, the world is brown. You know what I mean? Most of the world is brown. So and we are, too. <laughs> so with that being said, yeah. Um, you have a brand that is started by two black men, but features a brown woman, mm -hmm. which is all a part of that representation. So for you guys, with what you're doing, how important is um, pushing representation as well as a good beverage? I mean, it's just, it's just who you are, man. We try to, uh, you know, as, as much as we can, you know, stick to our roots. Uh, and then we just, you know, being in our background and things like that, we also try to be uh, diverse as well. So, you know, not being in a narrow, you know, mindset of being like, oh, it's just, you know, this certain type, but we say real it is, is everyone, uh, all, all inclusive and things like that. So that's what we try to stick with. That's our message uh, going, going forward and, you know, it, try to stick consistent with it as well. Okay, now I'm not going to ask for the recipe. However, <laughs> When it comes to the Red Lady experience, yeah. for somebody that has never tried it before, how would you guys describe the Red Lady experience? Yeah, man. So the, the best thing to tell people is a mix between a sangria and a rum runner. And uh, most people have, have had both of those things. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, we get the sweetness, we get that. And really, that's just the, depending on the person's palate. Uh, mm -hmm. We've had people tell us it's super sweet. We've had people tell us it's tart. Uh, we know for, for our experience, like, there, we'll, we'll, we will give you the main ingredient, you know, pineapple and cranberry. And we don't want anybody to be allergic to it before they try it. But 
uh, we put the cranberry in there to combat the sweetness of the pineapple. And mm. so, because uh, a lot of things, a lot of rum punches uh, don't add that cranberry and it's very, very sweet. So uh, I know for our likeness, we, we, we do the brown, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, mostly. And so we wanted we wanted to bring that that sweetness down a little bit while still remaining with a consistent taste. And don't don't get us wrong, it is strong too. You have a few uh, cups of the red lady because it's twenty percent uh, forty proof. Uh, you will feel it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. you might think, all right, you know, I could drink this. You know, then maybe three or four cups in, you like, okay, I feel her. <laughs> yeah. I love it a little bit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man, strong woman, man. We say be a strong woman. Yeah, don't yeah. get it, don't get it twisted. <laughs> yeah. So look, when it comes to working as a team, you know, having two different personalities, but hopefully one vision, how do you guys make that work? Like what um role do you feel like you play, um, Jared and Javars? What role do you feel like you play? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, I started it, you know, can but being an owner doesn't mean I have to do everything. So I, you know, I had to realize that, you know, very early on, especially, you know, bringing Javaris on. I know, especially for me, over time, the, the roles have evolved. Um, I, I'm really on the kind of keeping us cohesive, um, uh, mainly looking for funding and like the overall expansion. But I would say, you know, there's an intertwining of the day by the day to day operations. But to be completely honest, like Javaris is more is in the field more than I am. He, he can speak to that as well. So. Yeah, yeah. So in speaking of that, I'm more uh, like, yeah, Jared's, uh, like you said, he's the overall vision, trying to get the funding and things like that, uh, showing his face. But I'm, I'm behind the scenes, you know, trying to get the distributors on board um, and, you know, just trying to network and try to, you know, bring different accounts to different people that, you know, is uh, pretty much on the same page with the Red Lady like the bars, clubs, restaurants, uh, liquor stores, and things like that. That's re that's receptive to our drink to try to, you know, uh, you know, bring them into the account and, uh, or in, bring the red lady into the account and try to uh, hopefully, uh, you know, have a good relationship with those with those individuals, those uh, owners, um, you know, store store employees and things like that. Just giving the whole red lady experience because we are small, but we want to move as a, you know move as if we're big and things like that because, uh, you know, you. you you know, you just don't want to, you know, feel like there's any lack of communication between um, us to them and them mm -hmm. from uh, us. Like we are, you know, the red lady. So we want to make sure that uh, they can come to talk to us, if anything. So I try to network and, you know, bring those relationships uh, fruitful and things like that. So, uh, so yeah, I'm just more on the, on the ground, like Jared says, but, you know, just trying to develop relationships uh, overall. Yeah. Okay. So when it comes to a start out brand like you guys have been around for a minute at this point but starting out how important is it to be completely hands-on with the business but and then also when do you know when to kind of start delegating responsibilities to other people and bringing new team members in so that you can continue to grow yeah man despite us being out and, <clears throat> and having the business for a couple of years like we're still a startup you know what i mean and that's mostly because of, you know, the ability to scale up and, and the capital needed in order to be a successful liquor brand. Uh, I believe between now and the next six months, it's just going to be a lot of like hiring people. Actually, we just brought a promo team on in Atlanta. Uh, they just had their first gig um, last week. Um, and then we're, we're slowly but surely accumulating the right individual. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes like I think people get caught up in a team, right? Like you can have a team. We have Javaris. We have our our marketing and we have our CFO, four of us is the team, but then we have extensions. We have, you know, our media personalities. We have people like you, Q. We have people in Atlanta who can really speak on our behalf mm -hmm. and that aren't necessarily, they are part of our team, but you mean not necessarily the, the core. So I yeah. think really like having where your vision is, you know, where you're going and then figuring out exactly what you need. Like everybody needs people to spread the word, but like, how do we need them to spread the word? Are, are, are they, is that the right individual to even spread the word, to even represent us because some people have a, a hell of a following but that's not going to be the person <laughs> that's going to be like that's going to go out here and take the red lady elegantly you know so when it comes to building um a brand we all know that no oftentimes is a word that we hear far too often it's oh, yeah. not a word you want to hear oh, yeah. but some people it motivates you to continue to you know keep going some people that no will kind of crumble you and you'll give up and that is what it is okay. so as you guys are growing what do those no's mean to you when you know the kind of brand you have 
Well, I'll start first. <laughs> yeah, um, go, go I mean, this is kind of a conversation we have probably on a weekly, weekly basis. Uh, just when we start, you know, speaking to different accounts and things like that, we get that note. Be like, all right, uh, you know, once they once they see the red lady and how you know it can be able uh, to transition their establishment, like that, they're gonna come come calling back. So when they do come uh, calling back, you know, the price just went up double triple <laughs> and things like that yeah. so uh yeah like you said the nose just motivate us uh, you know it's, it's just you know it, it doesn't it doesn't deteriorate us from our message um our goal um our end goal and things like that because at the end of the day we do have the infrastructure to help us uh get to where we need to be like our distributors uh you know uh different plans uh and um i guess um expansions on the way that we got coming in the next few weeks that will help us uh, broaden our target market and um, tap into more accounts and things like that. So, uh, so you know, the nose is just like something that just fuel us for you know going going out and about to find that that, that yes because that yes could be uh, we probably got to know from that one account that's just one account, but we get that yes from a group that's ultimately you know cover like 10, 10 different people uh, mm-hmm. that's a part of that uh, that that or ten different establishments that's a part of that group and things like that. So we keep down the pavement and. You know, keep the message uh, the main thing, the main thing, and just keep going. Okay. Now, when you first started, you said you were whipping it up at the house. Now, I, I know this is not granddad's bathtub brew. Yeah, no, man. So, <laughs> how did that process go to say, okay, this is what I really want to do, and it's time to make it official and get into what well, not distributors, but. Uh, uh, what is it called when people- like the distillery? Yeah, you you're right. No boat distributors too. It's, it's a three tier yeah. system. I mean, ultimately, um, like I said before, Javars came home and I was you know whipping it out the back of my trunk, man. And it was, it oh, honestly, he oh, said, "What? Yeah, man, I was selling it like CDs, man. Oh. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Seriously, like CDs. But you know, when I'm doing 40, 50, you know, bottles a week, you know, what I'm saying out the back, it's it's crazy." But I told you like uh, what I was saying was the, the the tipping point was it was a senator's daughter was having a wedding, and I knew then like if I served it the first thing people ask is what is this, mm-hmm. so for prestige wise and then for, for my future wise like I just couldn't, so that was my tipping point where I was like I gotta make this thing official, I gotta stop you know what I mean, <laughs> selling you know over the sink and and buy, and then and then on top of that like using somebody else's products. You know what I mean? Like I was using somebody else's rum, using somebody else's cranberry juice with mm-hmm. the distillery. We're getting it all wholesale, and and you know once it's once it's slapped on our uh, our bottle, that's us. You know that that's our that's our liquid. Yeah, so that's that was the main difference. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. See, I I always kind of wondered that, like when it comes to the different ingredients, like do you go get a bottle of? I'm not gonna name the brand because yeah, they yeah, not, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, you know yeah. you a bottle of this and a bottle of that and mix it but now see the more you know y'all just just taught me something you guys are out there listening to hopefully you just learned something as well so what's next for um the red lady all right so what's next uh we got the cans launching in a few weeks uh the cans will be 10 percent um it'll be the slim cans so uh so with the 10 percent, it's gonna be pretty much the same recipe just a little lighter on the uh, percentage wise so mm-hmm. uh, with that, we try. We just try. Like I said, we're just trying to tap into and broaden our our target audience uh, to try to you know be more accessible and more, I guess, uh, I guess photogenic for the, you know for the IG and things like that. Because you know, as you see in today's uh, what's going on today, uh, the RTDs ready to go drinks uh, are uh, the big thing in the market right now. So we feel like we need to definitely uh, tap into that market to in order to mm-hmm. you know keep up. With those uh with those different brands and things like that so um in the next few weeks the cans will be launching probably not in the state of georgia uh you know once we first come out but uh probably later on in the year uh we we do have uh different markets that's going to be in in the state of florida that, that we got to serve and things like that through our distributor and our new distributors that we got uh signing on with us so uh yeah that's what we have coming up in the new next few weeks so mm-hmm. so I have two questions. And first of all, congratulations on that. That is expansion and I love to see it. Thank you. First question. Can Q get a special six pack <laughs> at 20%? Can I get the original 20%? Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't I don't you, you tell my you tell my in a can? Yeah. 
Well, I yeah, I don't yeah. know, man. It no, might, I, first actually, of all, I don't think you want it because yeah, we tried it's, to it's we, strong, man. We tried to uh, it's we strong. were just trying to come up with the, uh, what we wanted to be at in the percentage wise mm-hmm. in the cans. We tried the twenty percent, and it was straight alcohol. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, yeah. I don't, yeah. It tastes no fruity there. Yeah. You know, so, so, what, so what you ha- have had already, it's going to be a little different because of the carbonation too. Yes, you understand. Oh, okay. So we can. I guess the answer is we, we can make it happen. It won't be labeled. <laughs> we, we can put it in a regular. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you can have an aluminum can. We'll write your name on it, Q. That's how we'll do that, man. And, and See, second, uh, come in six pack. It come in four pack. Yeah, so you'll get four pack. Yeah. See, I, I might be I might be okay with that. And then that was gonna go into um the second question, um as far as the percentage that is going to be in the can because I notice a lot of cans are actually different percentages than like the, the alcohol brand that may be in a bottle. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, what's the science to that whole thing? Like, how do you know what needs to go in a bottle versus in the can? Well, okay, so a lot, so a lot of people, uh, you know, now this generation, millennials, Gen Zs, they're not looking to get drunk nowadays. So, uh, mm-hmm. so you know, having the cans that's more accessible, a little lighter, but you can still mm-hmm. you know, taste the alcohol. Uh, that's why a lot of brands are dropping their content a little bit down so people can uh, you know, continue to enjoy it, but not get drunk off of it and things like that. So that's, mm-hmm. that, I guess that's the science, but that's, <laughs> I guess the uh, logical thing that they're doing nowadays to, in order to tap into you know, the new generation that's buying uh, beverages and things like that. Cause a lot of beer companies are transitioning into you know, RTD, so things like that. So, yeah. Um, in order to keep up, they they have to drop the percentages, and you know we thought we should do the same thing as well. So we're just trying to find that their happy medium that you know we still be able to market ourselves as you know strongest you know RTD uh, rum punch out there in the market, and you know all natural and stuff like that that you know goes with it, but also keep uh, the taste and things like that the same. So that's what we got our idea at at ten percent, just in the half and things like that. Yeah. Okay. Now. In closing, where can people purchase, support? How can we get you guys into more liquor stores, into the homes of the people? How can we do that? How can we find you guys? Man, so you can find our locations on uh, www.theredladypunch.com. Immediately go get a bottle. When you get a bottle, take a picture of it and tag us at The Red Lady Punch on uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. And just tell the world, man, tell everybody, this is the, you know, the strongest rum punch out on the market, Um, black owned, obviously we are local, Uh, we feel like Atlanta is our second home, Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, you know, so, you know, St. Pete obviously being the first, and just, just spread the word, man, we actually too, make drinks with it, let us know what it is, like, because we're still, you know, saying we're still in our infancy, so if you go home and you make something fire, and you got 10 people at the house, everybody love it, you'll shoot us a message, we'll highlight you. And we tell people this. So um, there's a lot of room for growth. But again, just buy it. Um, the, the educational piece, and we never forget, is always shake it up. Shake well and pour over ice. So the minute you open that thing, if you're not going to finish it in one setting, which the average person isn't, <laughs> put, it over, put it in the refrigerator. And so, uh, and then just enjoy it with your friends, man. That's, that's what we ask. Don't, don't buy one, buy six. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. And guys, it is very affordable. It is worth the money go on the website get your own bottle like they said take a picture create a drink tag them and yeah that's how we all continue to grow each one no no not each one teach one <laughs> you go, rich go, rich one. go to your local uh uh liquor store and support um yeah. so i appreciate you guys so much i'm you know glad we're making this happen i'll see you guys in couple weeks yeah yeah Yeah. about three weeks yeah it's just again about three weeks yeah hopefully hey man if if those bottles are available i mean the uh cans are you know bring me one let me i got you we got you we got you we got you you. probably not the same percentage but Yeah, we, we got you. Uh, Cause we, we got we got some people that uh, that that know about it in the state of Georgia that would like to sample it. So we yeah. we have these, yeah, um, as well. Put your okay. message. Well, I appreciate it. And look, when y'all come, make sure y'all throw a couple in the car. Like I know I got to go to the liquor store. <laughs> in the got car. You, man. I got. We got you. We got <laughs> you. I appreciate y'all so much, and I wish you continued success and growth in everything that you guys accomplish 
with the Red Lady brand and any other brand you guys decide to embark on in the future. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Appreciate you, Q. Thank you. Yes. Yeah,